Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Brenda Corona, representing the ISO State Affairs at the California ISO. Welcome today to the draft 2023 to 2025 policy initiatives world map. In today's discussion, um, we'll be led by Jillian Belliger from Policy Integration and Governance Manager. And we will also have um, other key ISO folks, um, Alicia and also John Good in our line. And we are hoping for a few other folks to join us pretty soon, but those will start soon on this call. Uh, before I begin, we wanna go over some few housekeeping reminders that this call is being recorded for informational and convenience purposes only any related transcription should not be reprinted without the ISO's permission. Uh, for this meeting, um, it's structured to be two hours long. Uh, we invite everyone to include any dialogue and engage different perspectives that will be presented today. Um, we will keep comments short and brief if possible, because we, will do have, we do have a comment template available to those who want to expand on their comments um, later on. But uh, as an additional, um, slide here for the ask questions is if you may, if you're dialed in through the WebEx queue, um, please use the computer call me option and raise hand icon above your chat window. This will allow us to call on you when you have a question. For those on the phone line, press pound two during on your device so we can um, also call on you um, when it's your turn. Um, please remember to state your name and affiliation before making a comment. And also for those who are only, who are so many questions through chat, also include the affiliation that you're representing so we can address those questions um, to you and your um, affiliation. If you do have any questions for technical issues, feel free to submit a chat to my event producer, Silas or myself, and we will be able to facilitate those questions as well. But other than that, let's kick things off with Jillian. Um, if you could go ahead and be off on mute, we can go kick things off for the call today. Great. Thank you, Brenda, and thank you, Silas. Um, you can hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining this afternoon. I hope you had a nice long weekend, and I appreciate you dialing in for this uh, iteration of the, um, the policy initiative catalog and roadmap process. I wanted to start with just a few introductory slides um, for your benefit for to reflect our thinking about the, the catalog and roadmap recently um, and, and for the benefit of anybody who's not able to listen in today just to have this sort of codified. Um, I'll, I'll, I think questions have come up about how input is received in the roadmap and catalog processes and um, how we prioritize based on um, that, the, that feedback. And so I wanted to just take a few slides to talk about that. Um, as you well know, stakeholders in the ISO add issues to be considered to um, the policy initiative catalog pretty routinely. We have a couple deadlines a year where we try to kind of get a flood in of those submissions all at once, but they are accepted year round and we really appreciate them. Um, so we take all of that feedback and, and in conjunction with our own running of, of the markets and, and our own thinking about um, market issues and, and you know, uh, other enhancements that need to be made to, to systems internally, we approach the roadmap map process um, really with a few constraints in mind. Um, obviously, regulatory requirements come right to the front things that are mandated by FERC or come out of some other, some sort of legislative mandate, we obviously have to deal with those. Um, reliability and market efficiency needs, I think that goes without saying that we need to um, reliably operate the grid, we need to reliably and efficiently run the markets. So those are sort of our baseline uh, concerns there. And obviously stakeholder input um, is, is key from, you know, and when I say stakeholder input, I mean from the entire stakeholder community, including, you know, things that are identified internally to the ISO that are, are, are necessary to tackle. Um, and we also look at our strategic objectives. And I want to, 
I guess, take a moment to to point out that um, there's probably a clever way to sort of do circular arrows between stakeholder input and strategic objectives, because of course those strategic objectives are developed um, collaboratively um, and ultimately um, set forth by the ISO board and the WEIM governing body, um, but but those don't just come out of thin air, right? That that's, those are they're sort of a feedback loop um, between um, stakeholder input and and the development of those strategic object objectives. So um, I I just wanted to you know maybe it goes without saying, but I wanted to just go ahead and be explicit and say it that those are how we come up with. Um, what initiatives ultimately get prioritized in support of, of those constraints. Um, the other thing that to, to, to note is that the number and the size, the, size, the number is large, the size, the, the, the duration of initiatives and sort of their timelines for both the policy development, the, the tariff development, and, and ultimately the implementation timelines are really reflective you know, again, of regulatory requirements, sometimes we have to get things implemented by a certain time, but also really about available resources. Available resources is a giant category, and that includes ISO resources, stakeholder resources. Um, you know, our, we have, there are, there are lots of, of dependencies in this whole chain of, of tackling a policy initiative and getting it through toward implementation. So we even have to consider, you know, how much we are trying to get through our, our software vendors, et cetera, at the same time as we're, as we're doing all of this other prioritization. So um, we do try to keep all of that stuff in mind. Um, regulatory and implementation timelines, I already touched on that. Interdependencies, certainly some initiatives need to get done first uh, before a, a, a further enhancement can get done, or sometimes there are just dependencies that prohibit us doing things all at the same time. We have to kind of do it in stages, and and um, that is, you know, also also presents constraints that we try to take into account here in the roadmap um, as we develop those um, those swim lanes. So we can go to the next slide. Um, Again, just trying to provide a little bit of, of intro before we get into the meat of the roadmap. Um, I wanted to, to, to tell you that, you know, the, the ISO really works hard to incorporate the feedback from stakeholders um, in the catalog process, but also, you know, feedback that we've received in ongoing initiatives or in other venues. Um, and, and so I wanted to provide just a few examples of that. Um, so the first is, is really regarding price signals and price um, transparency. So stakeholders have expressed a lot of concern about having accurate price signals. I think a lot of this came out of analyses following, um, you know, summer, summer events um, and tight supply conditions. And so um, we really point to, in particular, elements of the price formation enhancements initiative, which includes, you know, scarcity pricing, fast start pricing, evaluation, um, extension of the flexi ramp product horizon, and we think all of those are in support of providing the market with, with really those accurate price signals, um, in particular during during uh, tight supply conditions. If we could go one more slide, I have um, some examples. Also, on the the topic of storage, so obviously the storage community is big and growing. They currently represent over 5,000 megawatts of capacity in California, and due to just the the the, the, the pace of, of things as well as regulatory requirements on the uh, IOUs, et cetera, we expect to see that doubling in the next few years, two to three years. Um, so that's that's starting to become a very substantial part of our fleet, um, and they have very particular needs, and, and um, they're, you know, quite different from the sort of, we, we spent a lot of time kind of getting used to VERS when VERS first came on the system, and, and now we are really spending a lot of time kind of grappling with the unique issues presented by um, by storage and their, and their needs. So, um, I, I, I 
we, I recognize that. I've heard that in stakeholder initiatives. I've heard that um, at board meetings and, and really recognize that that is, is a, something of a big concern to the, the broader community. And, and while we have some initiatives that are specifically targeting storage modeling, for example, that, you know, obviously the storage modeling enhancements, um, we're finding that increasingly the, the, the unique needs of storage resources are being represented or, or addressed, I should say, in lots of different initiatives. It, it, it's sort of starting to crop up, you know, elsewhere. So we're seeing it in price formation enhancements, obviously. Again, to reference scarcity pricing, that's going to be beneficial for storage resources. Um, there, there are unique issues for storage in bid cost recovery, um, multi-interval optimization, um, and then I, I will note that we do have um, an initiative on the roadmap that you will see shortly um, that targets really work how we can best dispatch um, both variable energy resources, but increasingly storage resources with their incredibly fast, I mean, instantaneous ramp rates. So um, we're really looking at the unique um, concerns of storage resources um, across several fronts. We can go to the next slide. Um, and just one more category of, um, if you don't mind, I don't know who's in charge, if it's Brenda or Silas, I, I beg your pardon. Um, thank you. Just one more batch of examples. Um, we've heard a lot across the Western interconnection um, about, you know, just really a strong desire for more regional markets and, and, and that functionality. Obviously, EDAM um, extends the, the uh, day ahead market to WEIM entities. Um, and then DAME, day ahead market enhancements. I'm, I'm trying to go light on the acronyms. If I, if I uh, trip anybody up, put, put a note in the chat. I'll be happy to respond to that. I try not to, but um, there's so many acronyms, sometimes I forget. Um, but uh, the day ahead market um, will definitely support uh, regional expansion and reliability through markets, in particular by, by defining a, the imbalance reserve product. But, but regionalization and, and, and these efforts are, you know, like the, the idea of storage, they're really kind of starting to crop up in all initiatives, right? So you'll see the resource efficiency evaluation enhancements both for the EIM and for um, DAME, uh, for EDAM, Transmission services and market scheduling priorities, otherwise known as wheeling, um, and then just a, a slew of transmission planning enhancements. So um, I, I am positive that I did not capture everything on these slides, nor was it my intention. Um, it was really more to give examples of what we hear back from from stakeholders in you know just a, 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 a slew of venues and how we try to to incorporate those, how those. Uh, you can get a sense of how those percolate up into the strategic goals um, that these are really uh, designed to support. So um, having said that, I think we can go to the next slide. Um, and actually, oh, yes, I do, I do want to address this. So lots of things get incorporated, and that was the good news, and then some things don't get prioritized and don't end up on the roadmap. Um, and that's not our favorite outcome, but that's uh, a matter of bandwidth. Um, and so, but we want to be responsive. So, so you know, as an example of that, and I, and I think this is really the biggest one that we had that we weren't able to do as a, a, a prioritize the level to end up on the roadmap. Um, we, we really got some feedback from folks, uh, um, in particular in the desert southwest, regarding. Um, Questions about gas resources operating in the markets um, within the, the Western interconnection, you know, not necessarily, I think, the California entities, but entities outside of California were, were really struggling with this. Um, in particular, timelines, uh, disparity of timelines between the gas markets and the electricity markets. Um, nothing we can really do to change the gas markets. It's real, real hard to change the electricity market timeline. Um, but, you know, it's it's a challenge, and it's been a challenge for for you know that comes up pretty pretty regularly over over the years. Um, in addition, that we've heard feedback that there's a, a need to incorporate more 
uh, opportunity costs or, or other things into default energy bids. There goes another acronym, apologies. Uh, DEBS, default energy bids for use limited um, gas resources. And so we've, we've heard that. Um, and, and what we what we want would like to do is to establish a stakeholder working group on these issues so that one, we can better understand them and, and figure out if there's a need for an actual policy change or, 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 you know, some other kind of approach to it, but also to just provide a space for folks to explore these, these issues that they're having and find out from one another what, how, how, how they've kind of been managing or, you know, whatever, to hone in on the problem and also provide a space to, um, to collaborate as market participants a little bit. Um, okay, so having said that, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, and, and here I'll point out, you know, again, just as lead in to the discussion of the meat of the, the presentation, but I think this is important. Um, we've received um, feedback for potential improvements to the catalog and roadmap process. We've received criticism about the catalog and roadmap process. Um, and we would really like your input on, on making that a more effective process. And we have some ideas, um, which I've listed down here on this slide, but I think um, more importantly, we'd like to conduct in the next six months or so, um, a, <laughs> depending again on bandwidth, but I, that's, that's the goal, the next six months or so, um, to conduct a stakeholder engagement effort to really discuss how we might um, do better on the catalog and roadmap process going forward. Um, having said that, I, I, I do, I, I will say that this year has been in particular a little bit halted, um, mostly because there's a tremendous effort going on within the ISO to really um, rigorously prioritize and, and, and get our arms around actual workloads so that these things can continue to move forward efficiently and, and you know, in the right order and all of that. So, so we've really been trying to kind of tie the, the roadmap prioritization at this very, very high level with a lot of other uh, prioritization work that's been going on. So it's a little rushed at this time, and I apologize for that, for your, for, because I know that it, it does impact your workload um, as, as reviewers and commenters of this material. Um, but, but, but know that that's what's going on sort of behind the scenes and know that, you know, again, we are committed to um, a stakeholder process to really look at, like, what would be the optimal number of iterations and how could we better um, involve the stakeholder community in this process or, you know, provide a, a level of transparency that makes everybody more comfortable because there is a lot going on here. Um, the sausage making is not pretty, but if you if you want to watch, you know we 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 welcome the input and and the feedback and the engagement. Okay, so let's go ahead and go one more slide forward. Um, and 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 with that, I'm going to actually before I before I jump into this slide, I want to uh, pause for questions. I think this is a good time, based on that background information, to just pause real quick, Silas and Brenda, if we may, and see if there are any questions or comments. If there are any questions or comments. For those on the call, just a reminder, please use the raise hand icon above your chat window or feel free to submit a chat on the chat question and we can go ahead and address those. But at this time, I don't see any questions in queue. Silas, do we have any phone line questions only? There are no questions on the phone line at this time. Okay, hey, super. Everybody's eager to get into the meat of it and so am I. So um, if you want to circle back on any of this stuff later, please don't hesitate um, uh, to either submit it in your comments, to submit it in the chat or queue up or email me. Um, I, I, you know, I don't mean to ram a bunch of stuff through, but I, um, I really welcome your feedback on those earlier slides as well before we get into, again, the, the actual roadmap itself. <laughs> um, a few notes, sort of maybe housekeeping notes before we start in on the actual slide. Um, unlike previous years, we've gone ahead and organized the uh, initiatives included in the roadmap. Uh, we've grouped them 
based on what strategic objective we feel they most closely support. Some of them are quite clear. Some of them are kind of, kind of support multiple strategic objectives. But we've organized them that way so that, um, you know, you get a sense of, of the, the, um, the impetus for those initiatives and sort of the broader scheme of prioritization. Um, so that's a little bit different from how this is, information has been presented in the past. I wanted to call that out. Um, I also wanted to note that we do have implementation timelines on the roadmap, but they are very tentative. They really, um, the idea is to represent our sort of no sooner than implementation timeline rather than our most, uh, I think in, in a lot of cases, if, in some cases we've committed to a particular implementation timeline and that's the timeline. In some cases, it's, it's defined by a regulatory requirement, <laughs> and that's the timeline. But in other cases, there it, it can be a little bit more fluid. So we tried to sort of provide our earliest implementation um, target timeline, recognizing that you know there are workload constraints and, and all that. And so I, I'll say this again, but we really would love to have feedback on your time on your um, impression of those timelines, whether it's this needs to be done sooner, I can't live without this, or uh, this is too soon, I, there's no way we can possibly um, absorb this change internal to our organization on this kind of timeline. The, all that feedback, that level of, of detail and mechanics is appreciated, we, 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 we appreciate hearing that. So um, when you're commenting on the catalog and the roadmap, please, you know, please comment if you have any comments on the on the, the actual timeline, please please do provide those. Um, and last thing that I wanted to note before diving in is really that there are always other mm -hmm. policy activities going on. Not absolutely everything is represented in the diagram. Um, we've tried to focus on the larger policy um, initiatives, the larger implementation efforts. And even so, when you look at the roadmap, like my, my um, organized brain likes to keep all of the boxes sort of the same height and the same dimensions to the extent that I can. But that is really, um, it belies the um, difference and the disparity of, of effort and, um, you know, required, you know, subject matter experts and, and workshops and, and all of that sort of stuff. It really does not capture those differences across initiatives. So in that sense, you have to use your imagination a little bit um, to, to remember that, you know, you know, a box that's one centimeter longer doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't, it, there's a lot that goes into um, behind the scenes more, that more than can be represented by that, by that box on the swim lane. And so I appreciate your um, sort of forbearance with that limitation of the depiction um, of, the, of the roadmap. Okay, so with, with all of that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we can go to the next slide, thank you so much. Um, and I'll start with critical strategic and tactical objective, which I've just been shorthanding as strategic objective. Um, number one, which is, for those who don't have a memorized, reliably and efficiently integrate new resources by proactively upgrading operational capabilities. So just a few notes before we go to the slide that shows the swim lanes with associated initiatives. Um, this, this initiatives in this category really um, are focused on improving the modeling of resources um, to better reflect their economic and physical characteristics. So you, your mind probably goes immediately to storage, variable energy resources and that kind of thing, and you're right. Um, in, uh, in addition, we have two phases of price formation enhancements um, included in this category. I think that absolutely supports reliably and efficiently integrating new resources. Um, so the first phase includes scarcity pricing, market power mitigation, fast start pricing, and extension of the FlexiRamp product horizon. I don't have that here on this slide. Um, and then the second phase addresses specifically bid cost recovery and issues with multi-interval optimization. Um, 
you'll see also under this category FERC Order 881, which is for um, ambient line, um, ambient changes to line rating. Um, while we think that is a relative, and, and this is a, the, the, the poster child for the, you know, regulatory requirement. We absolutely have to do this on a specific timeline. So that's, that. this is sort of the poster child for that, as I said. Um, and we think that there's a relatively straightforward policy initiative process really focusing on, um, you know, in, what information is required by market participants, what information is required by the ISO to support these changes. Um, but it's going to be a significant implementation effort. So you'll see that reflected in, in the swim lanes. Um, I mentioned earlier a variable energy resource, VER, uh, VER, um, and storage dispatch enhancement initiative. And that's really going to focus on operational controls and tools, um, especially, as I mentioned earlier, ramp rate considerations, forecasting, um, a lot of, of nuts and bolts effort to, to work with the, these new resources um, and their um, unique operational capabilities and constraints. Okay, so without further ado, you guys get to see swim lanes. You can go to the next slide. And that is going to show you um, what I what I just described in words, but those are the strategic, those are the uh, initiatives targeted at addressing strategic um, objective number one. Again, you see um, price formation enhancements phase one and phase two. Phase two not picking up until sort of third quarter of next year. Uh, FERC order 881, which needs to be implemented on a specific timeline, as I mentioned. Um, also, storage modeling enhancements, and then again, the variable energy resource and storage uh, dispatch enhancements. And just, just real quick, again, on the, on the timeline, we, we do include the arrows and the diamonds with, with a caveat that those are no sooner than implementation targets and that they're, they're subject to change. That's, um, that's a big effort to um, kind of get all that stuff lined up for specific releases. Um, Having said that, we really appreciate again your feedback on on that on those timelines, tentative though they are. Um, okay, so let's go to the next slide, which is a little bit of a narrative on items that sort of fall under uh, critical strategic and tactical objective number two. <clears throat> and and when we're, we're going to go through one, two, and three, and then I'll pause for questions. So bear with me if you have questions. Jot them down. I'm, I'm just trying to get through um, some of the, the nitty gritty here, and then we can take some questions on stuff and go back in slides as needed. So, strategic objective number two is to strengthen RA and meet California's across California's SB 100 goals um, through long-term transmission planning and effective coordination with state agencies. That is a mouthful, and that is reflective of how hard that is. So, currently. Resource adequacy enhancements is a big placeholder um, on the the roadmap, um, and you'll see that on the next slide when we get to the, the swim lanes. Um, that really reflects um, a, a, the fact that you know we need to take some time to holistically think about how best to to adapt to. The changes that come from the CPUC and, and changes that are necessary for our expanding um, day ahead market and for WEIM entities and just really be strategic about um, what, what we need to do in the ISO market to, to accommodate um, and, and intelligently react to um, regulatory uh, requirements in California. So, there's a little bit of uncertainty there, but a big placeholder. Um, you'll also see changes to um, capacity procurement mechanisms, CPM. Um, we have a, a relatively targeted initiative that's going to the board next month, but also um, some changes. So, some as required by the tariff review of the soft offer cap um, coming up in CPM phase two. Um, in addition, you'll see reflected here, and this you won't see probably a whole lot coming out of the policy group, but rather out of the transmission planning folks. They have some um, FERC 
NOPERS, Notices of Proposed Rulemaking, that's a fancy acronym, um, on trans transmission planning and extreme events and generator interconnection enhancements. So you'll, you'll see that, um, you know, that's a considerable amount of effort um, for stakeholders and for our transmission planning folks, and that will be reflected in this um, um, roadmap as well. So with that said, let's, let's again go to the next slide and we can see this um, sort of laid out in a more visual way. Um, I also have a play, in addition to the items that I just spoke about, um, you'll see a, a, a block here, third down for interconnection process enhancements. Um, and, and that is something we, we included here without necessarily a hard timeline yet. I'm still working on that, but um, wanted to sort of recognize that that is, that is a block of work both for the ISO and for stakeholders, um, and that that is, that is um, ongoing at this point. Um, just wanted to, the elephant in the room is that really long uh, block for RA enhancements, and again, um, it, 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 it looks very um, not specific, <laughs> not um, well-defined, and that's because exactly because we're going through the considerable effort to really get our arms around that and define that well, um, thoughtfully and strategically for the next couple of years. Um, so I don't, so I don't, that there's, that's just a giant block and I apologize for that, but that is reflective of um, our own um, planning going into that effort at the end of the first quarter of this year and really trying to kick off some efforts to some actual policy initiatives to address that strategic thinking and those goals. Okay, um, all right, so then thank you. You read my mind, we'll go to the next slide and talk about critical strategic and tactical objective number three. Uh, which is, this is really our regionalization bucket. So build on the foundation of the WEIM um, to further expand Western market opportunities. And so the usual players jump to the front. Um, we have EDAM and Wheeling, um, which have are so extended day ahead market and transmission service and market scheduling priorities. Um, Wheeling, better known as Wheeling, uh, those have been, just been approved by the board. Um, they're included in the roadmap just to reflect their ever looming presence and the long implementation, more importantly, the long implementation timeline associated with them. Um, and then um, we also anticipate initiatives to develop enhancements to the extended day ahead market um, and to the resource efficiency evaluation for the EDAM. Um, we uh, recognize that there is work to be done to establish processes by which the ISO as a BAA participates in the extended day ahead market. Um, and also to address uh, coordination of, you know, GHG policies uh, across the West, different, different states having different greenhouse gas um, policies and, and needing to reflect that um, in, in, the, uh, in the market. So, um, without further ado, we'll go to the last sort of swim lane slide. Um, and thank you. And so here you see in green, I have EDAM and TSMSP wheeling phase two. Um, those are green because they've been board approved. Um, but I wanted, again, I wanted to keep them here just so that you could um, sort of see them with, with their, their cohort of initiatives in support of regionalization. Uh, obviously, DAME, we're doing some additional workshops and trying to, um, you know, just address outstanding stakeholder feedback and also issues that the ISO has identified um, prior to taking that to the board. So that one got slowed down just a little bit in support of that. Um, and, I, and I already noticed here, noted here um, KISO participation in the EDAM at the BAA, um, RSE, the resource, resource Sufficiency Evaluation, the initiative that keeps on giving, will have phase three starting towards the end of this year. Um, and, and I have a placeholder there for EDAM enhancements, extended day ahead market enhancements, recognizing that after some, some experience with implementing and, and, and working with the EDAM, we anticipate that there would be um, 
perhaps some some changes or enhancements necessary to run through a stakeholder process and, and that, um, you know, as that huge endeavor kind of takes shape. I wanted to make one more note real quick and then I'll pause for questions. I feel like I've been talking really quickly and I apologize, um, but I, I look forward to your, your feedback. Um, and I'm kind of racing maybe to get there a little bit. <laughs> so I apologize for talking about it. Um, I did want to just say one more thing on this slide before we pause, we, we stop for, for discussion, and that is that there is not a, a, an arrow and a diamond for the GHG coordination initiative that you see there, kind of one, two, three, fifth down in this, in this diagram. And that is because we just don't have the regulatory certainty to know when it, things need to be implemented, and we recognize that it's, in a lot of ways, it's going to be an ongoing uh, level of coordination and not simply a, a finite stakeholder initiative. I've sort of represented it that way with the box with four corners here, but um, really recognizing that 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 is that's going to be an ongoing effort, and we don't have like regulatory certainty on on when things need to be implemented in support um, of of that coordination. Okay, so. Now, is the, now that was all the exciting part for you guys, and now the exciting part for me is pausing and, and getting feedback. Thank you, Jillian. We do have one person in the verbal queue, Brian Becker. Please make sure to introduce yourself and your affiliation before speaking. Jillian, hi, it's Brian Thaker with Middle River. Can you hear me? I sure can. Thank you, Brian. Great, thank you. Um, question, following the RA Slice of Day workshops or as part of that discussion last year, there was mention of a CAISO stakeholder process to, for lack of a better term, operationalize the Slice of Day framework. Is that, is that part of RA enhancements or is that envisioned as a separate initiative? I think that is, in, 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 uh, and I, I will say my piece and then I'll see if any of my fellow panelists have anything to add. Um, but it really is, I mean, that, that is a right up front, um, uh, you know, immediate kind of concern. And I think that absolutely is, is top of the heap in considering how to approach RA enhancements as a whole. Um, how it works out in the phasing of things, and we're going to obviously have to chop things into staggered initiatives. How, where it falls in that, I do not know. Um, I think that thinking is still going on, but I do know that that, that, that consideration for the operate, I know that word is funny, operationalizing slice of day. Um, sounds like the ultimate inside baseball, but yes, that is something that I think is, is on the near term. And, and maybe I'll pause and see if many of, I, I know John Gooden is on the line, if we have anybody else um, who, who would like to speak further to RA enhancements, that would be great. Yeah, Jillian, I can jump in here that uh, absolutely right. I think our RA enhancements initiative is a catch-all for sort of all things RA, including uh, what we uh, need to do or um, can do on operationalizing the slice a day. It's not exactly clear how much we're going to be able to do on that front, Brian. That is a hot topic internally. Um, but that would be definitely incorporated into that swim line. Okay, John, Jillian, thank you much. Thank mm -hmm. you. Any questions for us, Brenda and Silas? I don't see any more hands raised. Um, Silas, can we confirm any audio phone line questions in queue? There are no questions on the phone only line at this time. Okay, super. All right, well then let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, as I mentioned at the outset, there are some initiatives ongoing and upcoming that are not reflected in those swim lanes. Frankly, they just get too crazy if you really look at everything that's going on. Um, so we have uh, DER DSO Action Plan. I, um, I did that to you again with the acronyms. It's Distributed Energy Resources and distribution system operator action plan. And that is kind of in the wings waiting for um, decisions from the CPUC on how IOUs 
um, can really participate in the market functionality we already have for DERs, for distributed energy resources. So that is something that is, is out there, but we, it's planned with known work. It's the, it's the known unknowns or the un, whatever, however you say it, the known unknowns. Um, it's out there, we need to tackle that. Um, some things that are kind of already go, going on, changes to subscriber particip participating transmission owner participation rules. Um, uh, some, some other relatively small changes, market parameter change enhancements, um, some rule of conduct issues, minimum state of charge, as you know, is, is, is ongoing. We have a stakeholder call on that soon, or I have comments due on soon, I apologize. Um, generator connectivity challenges, slash enhancements. So there, there are, are things ongoing and upcoming that we know about. Um, uh, candidly, there are always um, things that crop up in the middle of the year. We, our best laid plans um, are, are often um, a, a little bit <laughs> thwarted by things that just come up, whether it's a regulatory um, requirement or um, reliability requirement or, um, you know, some other kind of market issue, things pop up during the year. And so we try to do this roadmap and make our place as full as possible to do everything that everybody wants. Um, and then we always end up doing more because things just pop up. But this is just a little bit of insight into other things that are ongoing that didn't seem like they really needed to be represented as boxes on the swim lanes themselves. But I wanted to call out um, just for situational awareness. Okay. Um, we can go to the next slide. I don't even remember what the next slide is. We're, we're getting towards the end. Oh, we are towards the end. Um, I, I really want to pause again for, for comments, but, but real quick, I'll run through our next steps here. Um, first of all, we, we, we walked through the roadmap with the RIF. So many of you were on that call and I really appreciate your doing this twice. <laughs> I really appreciate your participation and your interest and, and your feedback. Thank you for those who participated already in that forum. Uh, we published the draft roadmap and catalog on the 16th. It was a couple days behind um, and I apologize for that truncated uh, time to look at those materials before this call. Um, we're here February 21st having our stakeholder meeting. We're asking for your comments. Um, by February 28th in support of our effort to do an ex executive session briefing for our board and the WEIM governing body on the 21st. And so that we can publish um, a, a final draft final, a draft final roadmap and catalog on the 29th. That said, um, again, out of recognition that this has been a compressed process and um, you know, although, although folks have been doing this for a, a gazillion years are kind of used to our schedule where we, we post stuff and then a week later we have a call and then a week later we have um, comments to, this is a big effort. We have a lot of folks who have not been doing this for a zillion years involved in this process. We want to make sure that all those voices are heard. And so what we've decided to do is really say, look, we really want your comments by February 28th. We would love to have your comments by that deadline, but we recognize that this requires some reflection and some vetting in your own organizations and some thinking and some time. And if you cannot make it by the 28th, do not despair and do not give up. Please, please submit your comments um, really up any time before that publishing of the final roadmap and catalog on the 29th. And if we want to be just you know, wide open, please, if you've got something and you can't get it done by that point, we are still writing board memos um, all the way up until April 15th. So if you can get your comments to us, what, I mean, smoke signals, owls, I don't care how you get your comments to us, but we would really appreciate having them um, and are, are willing to, to bend over backwards to take those even up through tax day, April 15th. So that's a deadline for you. Um, and then that would allow us at least to, you know, while we can't go back and put those in, in we can obviously can't wind back time and put in, in and address those at our executive session briefing or put those in the draft final roadmap or catalog, we can at least, you know, incorporate them into our thinking, into our ongoing process. And this really is a recurring and um, 
ever-evolving effort. And we can include those comments um, in the materials for the May 17th um, open um, discussion of the road mapping catalog at the ISO board and WEIM governing body. So that was a lot of a lot of words on the next steps, um, but I but I hope um, you appreciate, um, appreciate a lot of comments from you and, and from you and those are those are uh, just press effort. So let me let me go ahead and stop let me, let me and, and to, um, to speak to on that. To speak to on that. Jillian, we do have four verbal questions in queue. On Great. the first one, we can go for Nancy. Let's go ahead and uh, mute your line. Go ahead, Nancy. Hi there. Good afternoon. Uh, Nancy Rader with the California Wind Energy Association. I, I wanted to address um, the topic of deliverability methodology reform, which didn't quite make the radar um, in the presentation. Um, Kaiso had previously indicated that that initiative would start no later than the end of Q1 this year, um, but the draft catalog says on page 40 that it'll postpone the pl uh, this plan start date because of a need to wait for the PUC to finalize its RA reform regulations. We don't see why that's necessary, um, and none of the 14 commenting stakeholders, including the PUC's energy division, all of whom supported the process suggested it would be necessary to wait either. So I wondered if you could explain Kaiso's reasoning on that. That is a little bit outside of my bailiwick, to be honest with you, Nancy. I'm wondering if I've got a panelist on on the line who can help me out with that one. Um, I, I hate to. I, I would love to answer that question in this forum, but I might need to do some research and follow up with you offline. Um, Silas, can we see if anybody on the on the panelist group is available to comment on that? Say, so Jillian, this is John Good. I think this is a phone a friend um, yeah. question. It's a <laughs> it's a great question, but um, unfortunately, we don't have someone like uh, Catalan there for the transmission group on the panelist team. So, okay. I, I let 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 us. We've we've taken that note down, Nancy, and I appreciate the question. <laughs> like John said, it's a it's a it's it's a it's a good one and a hard one. So let us do a little bit of uh, research on that. Okay, I'll, thanks very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Next, we would go to Carrie Bentley. Hey, Jillian, it's Carrie Bentley with the Western Power Trading Forum. Um, I have three clarifying questions. Um, sure. So uh, the first one is on the price formation timeline. Um, I thought price formation was going in with EDAM um, at, concurrently. Um, did I mess up understanding the timelines or has that changed? I, I don't, I, I, it needs to, it, there is a sequential nature of it, but I don't think it needs to be in lockstep with EDAM and, um, it, it became important to break it into pieces and do some like some um, workshops to kind of get the the whole process started and get kind of everybody like um, sort of speaking the same language. So, um, John, I don't know if you have any more that you want to say on that, but um, I, I'll leave it to you. But but I think there is there is a dependency, but I don't think it needs to be in lockstep. Yeah, that's right, Jillian. And that the timeline that we show after we've looked at price formation and its dependencies, the timeline that we show here, um, yeah, exactly. And the uh, bits and pieces that we're going to take at the different uh, phases are as outlined here, Carrie. So it's not uh, completely dependent on Dane. Do you mean EDM, John? Yeah, ED, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay, so um, just to make sure I understand, the implementation doesn't need to be in lockstep. Uh, well, the care it was the intention then when you say maybe break it up, so the tariff are is filed together. Um, I'm just wondering because a lot of the EDAM policy pointed to price formations. So I guess even if the implementation doesn't need to be aligned, I thought the tariff filings would need to be aligned. 
yeah, they're they're not as far as the price formation initiative will not be aligned with EDAM. The tariff balance. Okay, that's helpful. Thanks. Um, okay, and then um, my second question was just trying to understand the uh, the policy initiative catalog and and what it means. So. Um, Section 3.1 on page 7 says submissions incorporated, and then it says collapse spinning and non spinning reserves into a single product. Um, and then there's this commentary in red underneath it that says the ISO is prioritizing this change. And it wasn't clear to me whether you were prioritizing the change as in you're just adding it to the stakeholder catalog or you're prioritizing the change and that's something you're moving forward with. Um, I, I don't, I, let me ask Alyssa, do you, do you, um, can you speak directly to that or do you want to, um, that might be one where I need to, to follow up because I have not been as knee deep in the catalog as I was uh, a couple months ago. So Alyssa, if you, if you have anything to add on that, I will, I will pause for you, but otherwise, Carrie, I think I need to go back and do a little research on that. Yeah, and I can jump right in now, here but too. I but, yeah. Go ahead, John. Yeah, that, that that is not being prioritized at this time, Carrie. Okay, all right, that that's helpful. So I think then I'll just interpret that as you're adding it to the catalog, not moving forward with it. That's um, exactly. Okay. That was the, yeah, exactly, yeah, thank you. All right, super helpful. And then last clarifying question is um, then under submissions precluded, there's one in there that says the energy storage bid cap is not aligned with FERC order 831. Um, and this was a, an SCE submission. And I didn't understand the CAISO's response because it said that it was a known implementation gap that the ISO was working to address. Um, but to my knowledge, um, not allowing storage to bid over a thousand was a, a policy issue and it's, it's prohibited in the BPMs. Um, so if you could just clarify whether this was a, a, a typo or whether, um, the CAISO thinks that it, it's going to move forward to this and, and storage will be able to bid a thousand. No, I have Gabe on the phone and I'll, I'll let Gabe comment on this um, as, as manager of all things storage. But um, this was this was one where I think, um, and again, I, you know, I've been so focused on the roadmap, I haven't looked back at the, 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 the nitty gritty of the catalog in, in a bit here, but um, it really was identified as something that needed to be dealt with as an implementation issue and not as much as a policy issue, but um, having kind of ventured there Tentatively, you can hear it in my voice. I will um, see if Gabe has additional insight into this one. Hey, Carrie, how are you doing? Um, this is Gabe Murtaugh, the storage sector manager with California ISO. Um, you know, I think we have talked a little bit internally about what we want to do with um, bids for storage resources, but we haven't actually found a policy home for where we want to address that. Um, so I think, yeah, you know, I, I think this is something that in a number of different initiatives, the ISO has acknowledged is, you know, an outstanding concern and something we would like to address, um, but I, I still don't think it's necessarily clear, you know, what exact, what specific policy we're going to be addressing this in. I, I know it's not a very satisfactory answer, but I think that's where we're at right now. Um, well, no, no, it's fine. It's more, this is more just a clarifying question. So if, um, cause the catalog is pretty clear and it says it's an implementation gap. And so it's not being added to the mm. catalog as a policy change. And like from your response right now, it sounds like it, there is going to be need, needing a policy change. So I just want to make sure that that stakeholders who comment on this know whether to say, "Hey, wait a minute, no, we need a, a tariff change here," or yep. "Great, it's an implementation gap. Let's get working on the BPM." I I think that's fair feedback, and I I'm not sure we necessarily have um, a definitive answer for that at this point. Okay. All right. That's helpful. Yeah, that's but great. Th that's, thanks for the question, great. Carrie. I, th I think that's really important to point out. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say the same thing, Gabe, we were um, great minds to think alike. So, yeah, that I really appreciate you capturing that in your comments. That's a great point. And um, 
and we need to kind of think about that a little bit more, I think. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Next, we have Hillary Herbert. Your line's unmuted. Hi, this is Hillary Abair with HMH Energy. Thanks for the presentation. Um, also, just kind of following up with Nancy's question about deliverability methodology, I think there was a update paper submitted by Kaiso back towards the end of 2022 that I talked about some of the deliverability methodology issues that stakeholders have been raising, and I think that's where there was a, I think a, at least a soft commitment to initiating some discussion on that topic by the end of Q1. So I'm just wondering if the, you know, there's some parts of it that need to be delayed till RA reform is dealt with further at CPUC, and there's some parts that can move forward to have that, hopefully have that clarification. Um, so appreciate you following up on that. Yeah, that, that's really nuanced and I appreciate you bringing it up. And, and, and you know, again, it, it, this is the nature of this um, roadmap process and catalog process is, is so interdisciplinary. It touches every corner of the ISO and I couldn't possibly get all of the people who can respond to all of the potential questions um, on the phone. So that makes submission of these kinds of questions in your uh, written responses, like just absolutely critical, and and I and I wish I could answer your questions right here, right now. But I um, really encourage you just to to submit those in written comments so that I can make sure to get those questions in the right hands for for answering. So thank you, thank you very much for for voicing that. Next, we'll go to Pushkar. Let's go. Hey, good afternoon. This is uh, Pushkar Wagle from Clean Resource Consultants. Can you hear me? Sure can. Thank you, Pushkar. Hey, thank you so much for this presentation. I just had similar request that Nancy and Hillary uh, <clears throat> made earlier on the reform of the deliverability assessment methodology. But is there a way that once we file comments that we will have some sort of uh, written response? Uh, to our comments, um, I didn't see any provision to that. Um, yeah, we're we're this is this has been one of the things that I think has been a little bit of a shortfall in the roadmap and catalog. Plot. We've tried. I think we do okay in the catalog, but in the roadmap process, I don't think we've had a really good way of uh, encapsulating back and forth of feedback, and mm -hmm. so we are. We are we are brainstorming that internally. I, at the very least, putting together some sort of short document to accompany the the roadmap when it does move forward to kind of say, you know, to, to, again to capture what feedback we got and how we responded to it or how we incorporated it or didn't incorporate it in the rationale for that. So, um, so yeah, that is one of the improvements that we need to make. Um, we might try to kind of make. Make it on the fly in this round, but we will definitely, as I mentioned earlier, be undertaking um, a stakeholder effort to really kind of refine this whole process and figure out how we can to more formalize that response to stakeholder feedback so that that's a part of the record, right? So it's just part it's right. part of what's what's distributed to everybody and known among the entire stakeholder community. So um, so def definitely working on that. Um, yeah, stay stay tuned a little bit. We're 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 kind of trying to optimize on the fly on that one a little bit. Yeah, we really appreciate it because it's not just an issue with this. I think we have seen in the <laughs> certain other uh, stakeholder initiative that we file comments and we just don't know what happens with those uh, because we don't have any responses okay. from Kaiso on those. Um, okay. Just yeah. just a quick go ahead. Did anybody have anything else to say before I ask my second question? Uh, this is John Good. Let me let me weigh in here. Slightly, um, I think you know Nancy, Hillary, Pashkar, you've all had this a very similar question, and so I'm thinking that maybe we can um, get a call with Catalan to try to address this, you know, um, sooner than later. Given that there seems to be real interest in this, so um, let me uh, let me take a look at see if we can get Catalan and and get some. Uh, information on this and get directly back to you guys. Thanks, John. 
Should, mm-hmm. should I, are you doing that now or should, should I ask my second question? Uh, yeah, go ahead and ask your second later. question. I'll, okay. I'll be following up with you guys. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, on slide 14, I think you, you mentioned about the FERC uh, uh, NOPER thing, uh, Gillian, about the FERC order on transmission planning and extreme events planning. You didn't see any details of that as such in, in um, the, the draft uh, 2023 policy initiatives catalog. Um, are you saying that when the details of this are flushed out, you'll address those issues as part of FERC uh, compliance in 2024? Or I just didn't get it in terms of how we should um, interpret that. Yeah, no, that's, I think you're precisely right. Um, I, I, I don't have enough to even write up what an initiative might look like, but right. I think know that those rulings are out there and we just felt like it was the right thing to do to put, I mean, kind of a placeholder, recognizing that that was going to generate, you know, stakeholder discussion and, and, and processes and potential changes. And um, I, 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 so I, I don't have enough to, to write up an initiative, but I do know enough that I need to set aside people's time and energy for those. Understood. Uh, thank you so much, Jillian. That's all I had. Thank you, Pushkar. Next in queue, we have Tanya. Let's put yourself on mute. Please be sure to introduce yourself and your affiliation. Hi, this is Kanya Dorland with the Public Advocates Office. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, following on uh, Pushkar's question about uh, potential initiatives in response to uh, FERC snoopers on transmission planning and cost allocation. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the right forum to submit comments, you know, suggesting maybe preempting these forthcoming initiatives and and having a discussion on an um, independent transmission monitor or uh, other ideas in that NOPER. That's also, if we were to submit comments suggesting that, we can do that this month or next month, basically. Uh, yes, and yes, we would. I think this is a great forum for that. And uh, the sooner you can submit those comments, the better. It enables us to, you know, include the, the the wisdom of those comments in more iterations as we march forward. But we will accept them whenever you give them to us. Um, yeah, and I think that that is that would be a great contribution. Thank you very much. You bet. Okay, Brenda, Silas, do we have anything else that we, that anybody else uh, who would like to comment? Uh, who would like to comment? I don't see any questions in queue from anyone in the room, so. Okay, well, I mean, if I may well, say just one thing before you do your, before you do your closing, um, your closing um, announcement, I would like to say, um, Again, we are we're 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 trying to, to 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 really do a good job being responsive to feedback on these um, these these two documents, the catalog and the roadmap. Um, we recognize that there are some growing pains with that, um, but but we really look forward to your feedback and and are committed to incorporating it. I I think one thing that I a couple little details that I did not capture um, in this slide deck is really um, the gloves are off on the catalog. If you see things in there that you think should be taken out, we would like to hear about that. If you think that there are things that should be grouped together as a larger initiative, fantastic. We want that feedback. I I really want folks to dig in. We appreciate your input. We know it's really important to you. We don't want you to feel frustrated. Please jump in. Um, And if you have sort of outside the box, thinking on on some of this stuff, um, we would really welcome that. So that, I think that was just the one thing I wanted to add before we go ahead and, and close. Um, Brenda, I will hand it back Brenda, over to you. I will hand it back over to you. Thank you, Jillian. And thank you so much for KISO core team here today, Alyssa, Gabe, and John Gooden. I just want to go over another slide that I quickly created for everyone, for those who are visual. Um, this is like a four year or four month um, calendar view of the upcoming deadlines that Jillian mentioned. We do have that first 
um, comment deadline next week on the 28th, followed by a few other key dates that we mentioned about the CAISO 21st meeting and then the publishing of the draft final roadmap and catalog on the 29th. And then following the April 15th, we had that secondary comment period that we will welcome additional comments to review. And then the May 17th will just highlight another board, um, CAISO board meeting that we're um, planning to attend. But other than that, um, this is the ending of the call. Um, the link has been provided in the chat, but feel free to visit the process webpage. So it'll be under reoccurring processes and then you'll find the annual policy initiatives roadmap process 2023 on that separate page. So make sure you don't go on the initiative webpage, so get those um, kind of confused, but they're all listed there. But other than that, thanks so much. And I wanna turn it back to Silas, my event producer to close our call. Thanks everyone. That concludes today's conference. Thank you for using event services. You may now disconnect.